So today I want to talk a little bit about how U.S. beneficiaries of what's called a foreign non-grantor trust can be taxed uh, in the U.S. even if they don't actually get a distribution from the foreign non-grantor trust. Now, what is a foreign non-grantor trust? A foreign non-grantor trust is basically a foreign trust that was set up by a foreign person um, and then if it has a U.S. beneficiary, you know, that's what the U.S. refers to as a foreign non-grantor trust, right? So it's basically a uh, foreign trust with a non-U.S. grantor, a non-U.S. settler, non-U.S. person that formed the trust. So um, normally speaking, if you have a foreign non-grantor trust uh, with a U.S. beneficiary, that U.S. beneficiary doesn't have to pay tax until they actually get some money out of the foreign trust. Now, a very typical scenario that you see with a foreign non-grantor trust is, let's say, for example, uh, foreign parents or grandparents have a, a, a foreign child uh, that you know decides to go to school in the U.S. They fall in love. They become green card holder, a U.S. citizen, or you know stay there to work. Whatever. I mean, this is a pretty typical situation, especially here uh, in the Middle East where I live, but you also see it in Europe a lot, Asia, I mean, really all over the world, right? So you have a foreign family, one of the kids goes to the U.S., or more than one of the kids goes to the U.S. and becomes a U.S. person um, for whatever reason. And so often, uh, the, 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 the parents or grandparents that accumulated this wealth don't want to just give this wealth to this U.S. person now because they don't want the wealth that they created to be A, subject to U.S. income taxes and B, subject to U.S. gift and estate taxes when that U.S. person then wants to um, leave those assets to their heirs, right? So a you know, fairly common solution to this is to have the foreign parents or grandparents or whoever set up a foreign trust, which would be treated as a foreign non-grantor trust, and put the, the, the wealth in there, uh, put whatever the assets, you know, and, and, and income generating assets and stuff like that with, within this foreign non-grantor trust and appoint, uh, you know, include the U.S. Uh, uh, heir as a beneficiary. Now, in this particular case, what's so nice about this structure is that U.S. beneficiary never actually uh, becomes the owner of the property owned by the trust so long as the trustee doesn't distribute those assets to them. So a very typical situation, right, is there's like shares to a family holding company or a large portfolio uh, or something like that that are put in this foreign non-grantor trust. And as those assets generate income for the trust, that income is distributed to the U.S. beneficiary who pays tax on that. But the actual assets are never distributed. And the big benefit of this is that that U.S. person is paying income tax on, on, on the income, but those assets, because that U.S. beneficiary doesn't own those assets, there's not going to be an estate of gift tax when they pass those assets on to their heirs, right? And also, um, uh, if the trust is structured right, um, there also wouldn't be an exit tax if that U.S. person wanted to expatriate, for example. Um, so this is a really great structure uh, to guard against U.S. taxation where, you know, you have a non-U.S. person that wants to leave assets to a U.S. person. There are uh, some drawbacks with this. There's something known as the throwback tax. So basically, if the foreign non-grantor trust doesn't distribute all of its distributable net income every year and it accumulates the income, um, then in the future when distributions get made of that accumulated income, it's subject to a punitive tax known as the throwback tax, uh, which basically you know, imputes like an interest charge um, as if the tax should have been paid in, in, in a prior year. It's draconian, there's ways to plan around it, we know all of them, uh, but that's not the point of this video. Uh, the point of this video is you get a lot of really clever uh, clients that say, well, you know what, uh, I'm going to put my assets into this foreign non-grantor trust for the benefit of this U.S. beneficiary. Uh, but like rather than distribute money to that U.S. beneficiary to buy a house, for example, 
I'm just gonna have the trust buy the house, let the US beneficiary live in it. Or, hey, the trust owns a yacht that the US beneficiary can use, or you know whatever it is. Um, and they think that they're really smart and they're really clever that, okay, this is, this is a, great, a, a great way to pay no US tax, you just have the trust buy assets, and you, know, you let the US beneficiary use it. The IRS is faster and smarter than you. So basically what the IRS says is, hey, if a U.S. beneficiary has access uh, and, and, and can uh, use an asset owned by a foreign non-grant or trust, that U.S. beneficiary is deemed to receive a distribution uh, of the fair rental, fair market rental value of that asset. So let's say, for example, um, the trust buys a house and lets the U.S. beneficiary live in it. And that house has a fair market rental value of ten thousand a month or one hundred twenty thousand a year. Um, what the what, what, what the U.S. tax code says is that that U.S. beneficiary is deemed to have received a distribution worth one hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars that they're going to have to pay tax on. Maybe so. It depends on whether or not the trust has distributable net income. So if the trust has distributable net income or uh, you know, um, uh, accumulated net income, then there would be the, uh, a tax on this deemed distribution. But if, for example, there was no current or uh, accumulated income within the trust, then the deemed distribution would be tax-free because it's basically a, a deemed distribution of like capital in the trust, right? So there definitely are some planning opportunities uh, where you can control DNI, um, you can also con you know use multiple trusts to basically create a structure where a trust can give use of an asset to a U.S. beneficiary um, and have there be no tax implications. But this has to be something that's planned from the beginning, right? Uh, this isn't something uh, that you can usually do down the road. Um, but the main point is, you know, a lot of families set up these huge trusts that do generate a lot of income and try to use this, uh, you know, letting a U.S. beneficiary use the assets for free as a workaround. It normally doesn't work. Uh, it usually is going to generate a, a tax consequence um, that that U.S. beneficiary is not going to like. Uh, with substantial planning and a lot of, uh, a lot of times, uh, there are workarounds, but again, you have to think of it in advance. Um, don't be too clever out there because a lot of times the IRS already thought of what you're thinking of. If you have questions uh, about setting up an overseas trust or if something needs to be um, you know, reported or whatever, Esquire Group can help. It's also uh, important to mention that if um, there is a deemed distribution scenario, there is a U.S. Uh, tax filing requirement, a Form 3520 that's going to need to be filed to report that deemed distribution. And failure to file the Form 3520 results in a penalty of 35% of whatever that deemed distribution amount was. So it can be pretty stiff. Uh, anyway, we can help you with the planning, with the filing, whatever you need. Uh, check us out online at www.esquiregroup.com. Shoot us an email at info at Peace.